What's happening guys? James Blunt here with MMOS.com. I am at the Nosgoth booth. We're going to check out some of the new stuff with Nosgoth here at PAX East 2014. And I am here with... Hello, I'm George Kelly and I'm uh, the community manager on Nosgoth. Awesome, man. So you are all about the lore in Nosgoth. Tell us a little bit about how this is related to uh, the Legacy of Cain series. Well, Ed, that's a great question. I love this question. So, um, as everyone remembers, the uh, original opening cutscene from Glyphnex in, the Sol in Sol Reba, it was great. You know, it starts off with that fantastic VO, you know, Cain was deified, you know, the clans tell tales, etc., etc. And the cutscene ends with uh, Raziel being cast into the abyss by... Uh, uh, the lieutenants Dumas and um, and Terrell and Kane wandering off, um, and then when and then he's, he falls down the abyss for around about a thousand years. And when the gameplay actually starts, you know Kane's empire is uh, completely decrepit, and the vampires have, have devolved beyond all kind of sense of reason, thanks to or owing to uh, uh, Nepraptor's curse, which was a, a, a mechanic that was in the uh, in the first game, Legacy of Kane Blood Omen. Um, Although mechanic probably isn't the right word for it, um, and um, plot point, and um, this game takes place in that 1,000 year span, so it gives us the opportunity to really explore what Kane's empire looked at, maybe not right at the height of the empire, but certainly just just post being at the height of the empire. It also gives players the opportunity to to play from the human side, you know, for the very first time. And it's important to stress that there's no heroes in Nosgoth. You know, uh, everyone has their own dark motivations. You know, the vampires are apex predators, and they want to make sure that they maintain their uh, their their place at the top of the food chain in Nosgoth. Everybody's got to eat, absolutely. And and the humans, it's not enough for them just to, just to live side by side with the vampires. They want to wipe them out on a you know on a, you know it's genocide for them. They wouldn't they won't be happy until every last vampire has been. It's definitely not true blood. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> it's not Twilight either. No, we. we one of these it's a better love story than Twilight. <laughs> I'm certainly more in love with it than Twilight. Um, oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where um, we, it allows us to really emphasize, you know, the monstrous, beastly, scary nature of vampires again. You know, these, these, are, these, are, these are creatures that, you're not, that aren't to be trifled with. Um, uh, and it also allows us to, uh, you know, the, there's loads of stuff that we're putting into the game all the time that are, are real... Uh, nods and throwbacks to the original series. You know, we're going to be talking about um, for the very first time today at our, at our panel at, uh, um, at 12 to 1 the first uh, vampire map. All the maps you've seen in the game so far have been set in human territory or human controlled territory. Uh, the map that we're going to be revealing today is the first one that's been set in vampire controlled territory. And there's a few little bits of the level that will, or the map rather, that will really stand out for people who are familiar with the series. You know, there's a particular statue, there's some. There's some uh, some um, frescoes or, or murals that, that we're going to be putting in, and it's I, we're all really, really excited about it. And in terms of the, in terms of you know, if you're looking for more information about the law, we've got a ton of story blogs on our website. Um, so by all means, head there. And we're always looking at uh, ways that we can bring that into the game. But right now, we're very much focused on the fundamentals. You know, we want to make sure that the the combat is nice and tight and balanced. We want to make sure that you know all the the classes feel fully fleshed out and you know we've got you know good maps and good modes and uh, uh, and once we've got focused on those fundamentals and and then we can really think about you know expanding our stretch goals but we don't want to run before we can walk you know we want to absolutely make, you know we want to make sure that the core gameplay experience is 100 percent tight solid tried trust tried and tested and then we can start thinking about what else we can do that sounds good. It sounds like a nice future for the game. Yeah. So what are you showing off here at, uh, at PAX? I know you have a panel. You're going to show off some new classes, some new skills. Yeah, so, so uh, yesterday on the Twitch TV broadcast, we, we uh, revealed the new human class for the first time, um, uh, who's the Prophet. The Prophet, uh, also known as, uh, uh, drawn from the Lost Seers of Avernus. Avernus being a familiar location to uh, anyone who played the original Soul Reaver or Soul Reaver 2. Um, and she's a she's like a, a, a blood witch. Oh, it's a she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've now got two female classes in the game, and that's something else we wanted to do. You know, with Legacy of Kane, there's always you know the community were always very aware that there was there wasn't enough of there weren't as many female characters, and the only female character that had any you know the female characters that were in the game tended to die pretty early. Like Ariel dies right in the opening of Blood Omen. Uma Blood Omen in Blood Omen 2. Uh, she uh, she gets killed by by Kane towards the end of the game. You know these these people don't really stick around, and you know now we're giving because uh, and we have plenty 
of, of female fans of the series and female fans of Nosgoth, and and we wanted to do something that you know that they can have you know a, an easier way for them to identify as well. Awesome. So, what sort of uh, weapons does the prophet use? So she, she, you know what? I'm gonna at this one. I'm gonna introduce uh, Nosgoth's game director. There we go. There we go. Hello, I'm Corey Davis, Nosgoth's game director. Uh, so we're talking about prophet weapons, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. she's got two flintlocks. Is that what we're calling? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of like the pepper pot style of pistol yeah. that you got in like the 1700s. So it's not a revolver. She doesn't, she's not like a cowboy, right? But okay. she's got two weapons. She's sort of hunched over, hag-like, kind of creepy. Oh, boy. She's all about like curses and blood magic and really dark, messed up stuff. So she's our, definitely our nastiest human class. Just just out there to put the herd on the vampires, basically. Pretty much. So we also have a new vampire class, yes? Yeah. That's the Deceiver. He's coming out in the game next week, I believe. And he's all about illusion. So he can turn into a human. Suddenly you don't trust your teammates anymore, which is a pretty big change. He can backstab people. He can create copies of himself. But you don't know which one is the real one. And he can actually, because he's like mind-powered based, he can take over a human's mind, run them away from their teammates, and kill them by themselves. He's basically Loki. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, so the new skills that are in the game, uh, I guess, do we have a couple new skills for each class? Or we are, uh, I'm sorry, abilities. Uh, or it's a little all over the place. Obviously, we want to add variety for everybody. Right now, we had two really good Reaver abilities going, so we just wanted to get them out to people. So one is called Sweeping Kick, and it replaces your pounce. So you kind of trade off long range, distance closing for a really powerful up close melee attack, and it knocks people down. So you sort of do a roundhouse kick send people flying. It's really awesome to use. Awesome. It sound, kind of sounds like the, uh, the the wing flap from the Sentinel. A little bit, yeah. It's a little more targeted and it's really satisfying to like kick people off of a rooftop for some reason. Um, and the other is Shadow Step, which people are really liking in the beta already. And Shadow Step is basically you turn into a cloud of smoke and teleport to a location. And while you're dematerialized, basically you don't take damage or get hit by projectiles. So if you see someone warming up a bullet to throw at you, you can literally like teleport through it into his face and beat him up. That's awesome. It's, it's a great escape move because you can like basically fly away from people. Yeah, that sounds pretty legit. Yeah. Uh, Nightcrawler them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, another cool new ability for the Sentinel is called Airstrike, and it gives him sort of an aerial harass. So we felt like he has all these great abilities for flying, getting away, and closing, but he doesn't have anything he can just do from the sky. And this lets him actually throw a grenade from the air at a ground target. So it's sort of I was like, waiting for that. Yeah, air-to-surface missiles type of thing. So that's pretty cool. We're looking at the numbers on that, obviously, but the early feedback has been positive. And uh, the last one that is not out yet but will be out with the Deceiver is the Scout gets a marked target skill. It highlights that enemy for your entire team, even through walls, and they take 10% more damage. So it's, it's kind of scary from a human's perspective on that. You know, with the teamwork, oh, yeah. you can just be like, well, he's over here. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so he highlights the bad guys, so that's pretty satisfying. It's, it's harder to get away, and you know, as a vampire, you know you're marked, so you know to like be a little bit more evasive while it's on you. Oh, that's good. So yeah. it's really nice checks and balances. That's a, my favorite part of the game is yeah. how there's so much skill difference between playing as a human's and uh, playing as vampires, you know, yeah. it's a completely different... Uh, that's a goal. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, recently the Founders Packs came out for the yeah. game. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What, what do you get with the Founders Pack? Uh, and, uh, yeah, so what do you get with the Founders So, pack? I mean, we wanted to give players a way to support the game early on. You know, people said, we love this game, we want to contribute to it in some way, and we want some exclusive content. So the focus was, what can we give you that lets you identify with the faction or character or whatever of your choice and gives you some way to say, you know, I was there first. I was one of the guys playing this in the beta. From day one, I had this awesome skin that nobody else has. So it's all focused on that. There's a couple tiers. Uh, there's a human pack and a vampire pack, and respectively, they give you custom content for those factions. So on the human side, you get uh, gold-plated weapons and uh, access to the scout class, which if you're not from the alpha, you have to earn the scout. And this gives you it immediately. Uh, on the vampire side, you get a custom reaver skin that's really cool and uh, access to the sentinel, as well as a bunch of other stuff. And uh, there's an immortal pack that gives you everything, obviously. And then if you don't want any of that stuff, there's a lower tier pack that gives you basically beta invites and access if you're not in the game, but doesn't give you any 
real exclusive content. And the other thing we've added is uh, badges that show behind your name in lobbies and places like that. And you get one based on the Founders Pack you buy. So if you buy the Immortal Pack while it's there, you'll have this thing forever. And whenever you join a multiplayer lobby, people will know you were one of the people that bought the Immortal Pack. So about the, uh, the new classes, you said that you have to earn uh, one of the classes if you're not in the Alpha. Yeah. How are you uh, able to earn, earn the new classes, or do the people in Alpha get that too? Uh, so the, every new class will have to be unlocked. The only ones we grandfathered were the, the two from Alpha that everyone had access to. Um, and you get one every five levels, so it's really easy to do. So you know, when you level up, you hit level 5, 10, 15, 20, you get a token at each one of those tiers, and that lets you unlock the class of your choice. So if you're brand new to the game and we released five more classes, you can pick any of them at level five. There's no set progression. Awesome. That sounds really good. Well, the game is absolutely amazing. It's fun to play. Awesome. Definitely recommend it to everybody. It looks like you've got a pretty nice presence here at PAX, so uh, yeah. thanks for having me. Cool. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming by. Absolutely.